You can heal your life, Louise Hay will say. Notice how often you use the word should. That's the best barometer of all. If your inner dialogue is all about should, 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 it would suggest you're saying to yourself and everyone else, not good enough, not good enough, not good enough, not good enough. And it would also suggest that you have a control issue or lots of control issues and you won't be fun to be hanging out with. So how do you turn that dialogue around? How do you turn it around to be something that's more life-giving? You start with recognizing you're in the perfect place and time always. It can be no other way. Perfect time, perfect place, and all is well. And when things come in that would suggest that there's not enough, you can tell yourself that I am supplied and supported. And you release the need to believe that anything's amiss. You can tell yourself that everyone is doing the best they can with the information, the understanding, and the awareness that they have. And you can be forgiving. As you practice this teaching, you will learn that every instant is a holy instant and every moment is forgiving. So if I'm kind of like a forgiving kind of guy, I'm really actively forgiving. I want to share of my time, my talent, my money. I want to give person, people a break. Anybody can be a critic. The word analysis, by the way, means to tear things apart. Those of you who are the brainy types, you know. Uh, Bill Cameron was a minister friend of mine some 40 years ago, and he told me a little story. He said, Greg, I'm fascinated with the human mind. I've studied psychology. I got a master's degree in abnormal psychology. He said, I think I was going to go for a PhD. He said, I became so good at figuring out what was wrong with people. He said, I could diagnose them from across the room as soon as I listened to them for about three or four minutes. And he said, and it occurred to me, because he's a new thought, minister. It became one. He said, it occurred to me like Paul on the road to Damascus one day I was hit with almost like blinding light that my whole approach towards life was backwards. We're not here to see what's wrong with people. That approach, I promise you, if I spend time with you with the idea of I can find your faults, I will find them. Are you a fault finder? Is that the way you want to live your life? How does that work out? <laughs> and I'm going to tell you something. Whatever you're spotting in everybody else, guess who has it first? If you spot it, <laughs> yeah. if you spot it, you got it. So we, we, we choose, as Bill Cameron did all those years ago, uh, to do it another way. And that can go right into philosophy, Blaise Pascal, you know. I remember him and when I was 18, 19 years old reading about this French philosopher. And he wants to live his life as though it is good. He wants to see the good that God wear. And then his critics would say, but what if you're wrong? What if it wasn't so? He says, well, I would have lived a life of 40, 50 years or my adult life where I would have seen the good in the God in all things. And he says, what could I have possibly lost living my life that way? Ernest Holmes says suffering, which everybody seems to suffer a lot, suffering's not God-ordained. It's entirely self-imposed. Bill Wilson, founder of AA, would say misery is optional. Anybody here suffer? Anybody here get all twisted up? <laughs> Worry? <laughs> Have you forgotten the truth of who you are, glorious ones that you are? Have you lost your way? Do you think you're an ugly duckling? <laughs> you beautiful swans that you all are? Are you hiding out in the, the brushes? You don't want to be seen? Do you have shame and blame, and are you living in a world of misery? Are you talking about other people? 
What a what? What a pity, right? Why? Why? What's, why do you have time for that? Exalted beings that you are, you have the ability to commune with the greatest ideas. And if you have people around you who want to do that stuff, swim away. 